Hi, my name is Todd Bigelow. I'm a freelance photographer based in Los Angeles for the last 30 years, working primarily with editorial, corporate, and nonprofit clients. I'm also an adjunct professor of photography and photojournalism, and a soon-to-be author on a book on freelance business practices. This is Two Minutes with Todd, a short video series where I address business practices for freelancers. Hope you enjoy. So creating versus earning revenue. This is something I just uh, talked about with some students from uh, George Washington University. Had, a, had an opportunity to speak with them through Zoom, obviously, um, the other day. And we talked about a lot of different things related to freelancing. Um, terrific, engaged bunch of students. Um, and this was one of the things that we talked about um, that I brought up, the difference between creating and earning revenue. There is a real difference. Simplest way for me to you know, make, make the point is right here in my own family. My wife has a traditional job. She goes to work Monday through Friday. Um, she does her job well, but when she shows up at work, um, she has uh, the work built in. She, she just goes to work and she works hard and she goes home. And at the end of the day, she doesn't have to worry about um, developing work for the next day. She goes to work. Her company provides the work for her to do. The company has the clients and she services those clients, right? So she goes out and she goes you know, to people's homes and she works with telecommunications and, and helps you know, make sure that their internet is working and so forth. So, she doesn't have to create the revenue. She just earns it. And that's not to make light of just earning it, but she only has to do that half of it. As freelancers, we need to create it first. And that's the biggest difference. And we need to keep that in mind because you have to create the channels for which you can then go earn the revenue. And a lot of work goes into creating it. Um, and a lot of that work will be unpaid. This is just part of being an entrepreneur. Uh, restaurant owners do that. They have to open their doors early in the morning and, you know, first they go to the markets and they buy their ingredients and then they go prepare everything and then they get the restaurant ready to open for the patrons to come in. And only once people start coming in and ordering meals do they begin to earn actually for the day. But a lot of work went into it prior to that. That's what freelancers do. We work a lot that we're not being paid for, but it's absolutely necessary in order to create revenue. So here's three things that I want you to think about that you can do to help create uh, channels for you to earn revenue. First, you have to develop the clients. There's many different ways to do this, but you know, this day and age on the, with the digital world, you need to be out there looking at websites, websites for publications of all kinds, websites for nonprofits and corporations and maybe NGOs. And you need to peruse through these websites and look at the about sections and hopefully the staff sections. And, and maybe it's called leadership, but whatever it is, look through those and make names of the people um, you know, write down some names of the people that are the photo editors and the director of visuals and then maybe the director of communications if it's nonprofits and, and so forth. Some of those will have direct links to their emails. Great, you're gonna utilize those because you do have to reach out a lot um, with cold emails, so to speak. And, and I recommend that you do it with very concise, you know, uh, concise email. You're not gonna write some big, long, you know, resume or anything to it. Don't even attach your resume. I recommend that you reach out with a simple email introducing yourself, um, you know, indicating that you really like their organization or their publication and you'd love the opportunity to collaborate, uh, perhaps fulfill some freelancing needs should they have any in the future. And then, of course, you should have a link back to your website, very prominent either in your, in your email signature or else in the body of the short, you know, paragraph introducing yourself. Um, yes, you do have to do these things. And yes, I have developed multiple clients through just reaching out cold. And I've also licensed projects through reaching out cold. So that is a way in which you have to do it. And hopefully it will, uh, it will generate a little bit of communication and perhaps even lead to you uh, meeting with them uh, personally, which I highly recommend, whether you have to travel to a major you know, urban area where, where publications are located, perhaps New York or Los Angeles or Washington, D.C., or maybe the next time you're in town for a conference or something, 
okay? You can meet with them personally and that can actually really help you um, develop that client, okay? You can also um, utilize a photo agency uh, to help you develop clients. Um, of course, you'll have to first, you know, get on with the photo agency and usually what I'm referencing is not the mega agencies um, like Getty and so forth, but perhaps some of the smaller agencies that um, cater a little more personally to, to the photographers and they might help might help you develop some clients. You can also go to marketing companies, places like Agency Access, which have been around for quite a while. You'll pay an annual fee and um, you can gain access to an up-to-date database with photo editors and visual people um, who have their information posted on there. Okay, so um, that's another way to gain some of that information on who to contact. Of course, you should definitely be going to photo conferences and workshops and, and any sort of social gatherings where, you know, people from your profession get together. And these are ways in which you can obviously maybe show your work if you're at a conference and there's a portfolio review or in some way make an introduction and get your work in front of people. Okay, so that's, that's a single super important part of developing clients is to research and find ways to get your work in front of people. Second way to help create revenue is to shoot stock, okay? So it's, it's a beautiful day. Maybe I'm going to go out and shoot a little bit. Um, you know, I'm going to put some images. Maybe I'll go for a hike if I have time, and I'll put some images in an updated nature gallery or whatever the case might be. Um, you can grab the link from that gallery and maybe send it out to clients that you would like to work with that are, you know, have an interest in that type of work. Again, if it's hiking, maybe I'm going to send it out to some outdoor publications or, or you know, nonprofits like um, Sierra Club or something like that. Of course, those images have to be good. Uh, that goes without saying and, and, and make them relevant to who you're sending. But these are ways in which you can shoot stock and either create some licensing revenue, okay, through places and people that are come to you and, and want to, you know, use your images and you're going to grant them the rights and receive a fee for it. But you can also use stock to, you know, create some galleries and, and, and send out those images with gallery links and get people to land back on your site and recognize that you do nice work and then perhaps hire you for assignment work. That's ultimately what you're after, right? Recurring assignment work. You can also use shooting stock to build your archive as a means by which to increase your SEO, your search engine optimization. That's very important because SEO will help you, will help others find you. Okay, so it'll help you develop clients because you're gonna build stronger SEO through so that through Google searches and in other search engine searches, people are going to find you and locate you, okay? That'll come with good management, which we'll talk about in a second, but using shooting stock to help build your SEO is an integral part of developing revenue, okay? So it might not necessarily lead to direct licensing every time, but that stock shooting will help you build your archive SEO. And last but not least, you know, understand that Google has, you know, um, uh, ways in which now that they will embed your information in their Google searches and indicate, you know, where the image is located and even if it's licensable, which leads me into the archive management. Okay, the third thing that you should do to help create um, revenue. Um, if you manage your archive well and you're in, inputting the correct metadata into the IPTC field and so forth and, and also on your website, um, you're going to help yourself by making that information available through Google um, and other search engines for people to find you. Okay, so metadata application, make sure the information is where it should be. So um, you, you have to have a, a section on your website um, where there's information regarding the licensing of your images. It can be with the images or it can be a separate section on your website for the images. But you need to take that link and place it in certain areas, okay, of the IPTC field 
rights usage is one place where I put it. I also put it in a second section, which I, the name escapes me right now. But that's really important because that's what Google will pull. And on a search engine um, result, when somebody's searching for a particular images, that's where they're gonna display that the image is perhaps copyrighted. And if it's licensable, Okay, and they'll actually, you know, you'll they'll be able to link right back to that image, anybody that's, you know, came across that when they were searching, and that will obviously uh, lead people to discover your work and maybe even license it, okay, or, you know, hire you for an assignment. So you definitely need to be aware of where the metadata needs to be applied. Um, on certain platforms, I'm on Photo Shelter, um, they put little SEO indicators um, throughout their the gallery section and other places where I need to uh, make sure I'm aware of that and fill out that information uh, in those sections because they're telling me this is where Google is going to trawl for information. It's going to help your SEO. And the stronger your SEO, the easier it is for people to find you and your work. Last but not least, under archive management, please copyright your work. That is a significant part of managing your archive, is to protect it, okay? Protect it against unauthorized use, okay? You will have to go back and look at the copywriting uh, video that I did on Five Basics, um, but if you're not copywriting your work, you're putting your images out there for others to potentially use without authorization, and um, that can lead to lost revenue and does lead to lost revenue a lot for me. So I'm constantly having to battle against infringement and unauthorized use. So the principal means by which I do that is making sure my images are registered with the United States Copyright Office. So if I do have to pursue any sort of litigation or, or you know, go after an infringer, um, I'm going to have the full weight of the law behind me um, to help hopefully, you know, force a recovery of some loss fees. Okay, so again, there's three ways, develop clients, shoot stock, and manage your archive um, that you should keep in mind always to help you create um, channels so that you can earn revenue because creating and earning are different things. As a freelancer, you will have to work hard to create it. Okay, I hope that helps. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time.